Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Adda da Khalki, he read that Nafsi was in Asu Arshi, Womi Daddy Kalimati, Umutaha Ilmi and Jamma Mashah, or Halaka, or Dara, or Barra, Alma Rai Shaharit of Rahman, Rahim, and Malik, and Kadus, and Aziza Hakim, where Shadowan La Ilaha, Illahu, Wahdahula, Sharikala, Lahul Mukhlahul Hamd, Yehi, why you meet me Yadah Hill Kaya, who are there, who is Shay Kadir. وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله وحبيبه وخليله وأرسله بهدى ودين الحق يظهره على دين كل ذكرهات المشركين مبارك وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في الكتاب يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقدموا لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله وتقول الله إن الله سميع العليم <تصفيق> Within society, there's certain parameters set up to show the respect. There's certain parameters that's set up to not only show respect, but the respect that you show also frees you from having contempt, especially in leadership. In the uneducated world meaning they either don't know or they don't practice there's very little respect for others matter of fact respect is seen as something of weakness because in order to apologize they feel that that's a form of weakness or a form of submission but it takes a lot of courage to be a person that is apologetic or a person that takes, you know, account for their behavior or their misbehavior and so on and so forth. A lot of times in the everyday, you know, atmosphere, a day in the life <laughs> of the Negro Muslim, right? Your whole interaction, even though you know a thing is sunnah, like for instance, something that's easily neglected. If you're angry with your brother, you have three days. After the third day, the Prophet Sallallahu said, the one who gives the first salam, who gives the salam first, that's the person that's free from pride, right? Second thing, we think so highly of ourselves that we place ourselves above and ahead of the Prophet Sallallahu when we ignore the sunnah and ignore the good behavior that we're supposed to be behaving with. This is what, if you look and go back and examine closely and examine the story of Adam, alayhi salam, his origin, his beginning, and look at the behavior of Iblis, right? Or Shaitan, as we also know him as. His behavior, he rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Allah ta'ala told everyone that was present at the origin of Adam, alayhi salam, to make sujood, and Iblis said, I'm not doing that. Ana ahsin minhu. I am better than him. All right? And so oftentimes our behavior displays that. And so Allah Ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Hujra, Ya ayuha alladhina amanu, la taqadimu bayna yaday Allah wa rasoolah. All you who believe, don't put yourself before Allah and his messenger. And we do that quite often. Right? We'll justify it. There's no paradise without sacrifice. You'll have Muslims there say, oh, I don't like wearing a kufi because nobody else wears a kufi. So you neglect. I don't want an imamah. It's not a thing about, it's not even about uh, uh, whether it's an obligation or a sunnah. Because when Muslims start talking like that, 
They only talk like that to justify on why they're rejecting that particular action behavior to prophesy something. When we need to be more like Ibn Abbas, where you do an action just out of the love for the Prophet In Medina, there was a certain tree that Ibn Omar, I'm sorry, Ibn Omar used to ride his camel or whatever animal it was around that particular tree. And Aisha asked him, Radi Allah Ta'ala Anhu, Aisha, the, the wife of the Prophet she asked him, <clears throat> what is it that causes you to do that every time you see that tree? He said, I don't know. I just know I've seen the message of Allah, so I tell him, do it. And so when you love someone, you mimic them, right? A man that has a son is something you'll experience. The one thing you'll find that your son does, that son that, that loves you unconditionally, he'll put on your shoes, he'll put your kufi on, he'll wear your shirt, he'll put your thobe on, your wife. She'll sleep in your t-shirt, your boxes, because of that love. And so oftentimes we have to use this and look at these examples. These are ishara, examples for us. And we have to ask ourselves, how much do we love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Many people don't know anything about the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But people will learn and study, and there's nothing wrong with studying and learning about Imam Malik and all other contemporary scholars and etc. But know very little about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then you love who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved. They know very little about the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? But they learn every controversial thing, everything that's dealing with everything except increasing in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So anyway, so Allah Ta'ala says, don't put yourself between, before Allah and His Messenger, but rather yet, what's up with Allah? In Allah has Samir Alim. Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He tells us about the status of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The status of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rasulillahi Uswatin Hasana. Right? And definitely, indeed, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is uh, for you, the message of Allah says, Salam for you, he's an excellent example. So no matter what you think is cool, everything that he did is over and above unless you honor whoever you're trying to imitate and mimic. And this is why I always used to argue against those who love to say, well, we need to learn what our mothers and father, our great grandmother and grand grandfather did in order to stay married 40 and 50 years. No, you don't. Because Pop Pop got some kids that's illegitimate. My mom couldn't stand them, and that's why most of your daughters, most of their daughters and our mothers, our offspring are independent, you know, strong, independent women and don't need no man because of the waswas that mama used to tell. My mom used to have resentment towards Pop Pop. She didn't want to be with him because she had to wait on him. She had to submit and be that woman that was waiting hand and foot, being taken care of. A lot of women don't like that kind of status, which I don't understand because it goes against the order of what Allah Ta'ala put in the Quran. For us to maintain and protect our women. But a lot of women don't like that. And Allah knows best. So the Prophet says some is that best example. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says. لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهُ وَرَيَّوْمِ الْآخِ وَذَلِكَ وَذَلِكَ I mean وَذَكَرَ اللَّهُ كَثِيرًا Now the next thing about this is. Is that you find the Prophet says some As an example. A perfect example. Only if you're hurt, hoping to, you know, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have a good standing on the day of judgment. If you don't care about that, then you'll neglect the sun. You'll neglect his behavior. And this is why people spend so much time and effort on creating a American Islam or black men's Islam or black Muslim, etc., etc., right? Not negating our cultural differences from other because each and every person has a culture and they have an agenda to, you know, to uh, motivate and elevate their people based on the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But when I say this and I put that in quotes, is when we take our cultural practices and elevate them far above that of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in our deen of Islam. And this is why you see the chaos and the destruction that you see today. So then in closing, the Prophet, I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, the one who hopes to, you know, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last day, 
And they also, as a result of this following this example, they are the ones who do dhikr Allah al -Kathir. They are the ones who remember Allah Ta'ala a lot. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam wa ulama amineen wa a'im a'arabah al mushtahideen wa muqalladihim ila yawm al-deen wa ba'd I want to read you this hadith and then I want to leave you with this dua The dua is a beautiful dua It actually is a dua that if you make it, you memorize it and make it consistently. It's a dua that takes care of your youth or when you become, you know, a young adult until your old age. It's a dua. It's like a secret. And sometimes we overlook it. This hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I want to mention because when you're into trying to revive the son of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Like our master's namesake, Sheikh Uthman al Fodio to Qadim Allah ibn Rahmati Ameen, his whole movement was centered around revival of the Sunnah of the Prophet. He wasn't just only a faqih, but he was also concerned on re reviving the practical practices of the hadith of the Prophet based on the methodology of Amul Ahlul Medina, right? Not exclusively to, but broadened sense, right? In this time, you find people only on a segmental or fragmented type of Islam. They're either all Methabs, right? Or they're all Hadith, or they're all Ashri, or they're all the way Salafi, but they're everything except a whole complete follower of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Their agenda and their focus, I'm not saying that they don't follow whatever aspects of the Sunnah that they can, but their agenda, the thing that they push, is what they what they lead with. If they're sub, they will lead with Salafism. If they're Ashri, they will lead with Ashriism. If they, you know, whatever that thing is, if they're they're followers of whatever, they lead with that versus the character and the behavior and reviving the Muhammad, like the practices of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So when you find that you come into you come into uh, people where the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his character, his behavior, the agenda. It can be offensive and inflammatory to those who hate the Prophet So, the Prophet he mentioned in the Hadith, he said, "Men tamasa ridwan Allahu bi sukhti an nasi, fakafa Allahu mutna ah." مؤنث الناس ومن ومن تمس ردوان الناس بسخط الله وكل وكله وكله الله إلا إلا الناس. So Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in this hadith that whoever seeks to please Allah subhanahu wa taala, even if it upsets or make people upset, you'll find that Allah taala will take care of their needs. Right? They're not worried about what the people think or what they got to say because they know that their sustenance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will take care of their needs. But however, whoever seeks to please people, even if it makes Allah ta'ala in you, and this is something that we practice a lot, right? This is something that we practice a lot. We don't care about the outcome or the results of the behavior whether it's something that Allah Ta'ala will be pleased with, we're ready to risk it all, right? And whoever seeks this to please the people, even if it's something that goes against Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah will leave them to the people. Now you'll be lost in your thoughts. Now you'll be lost chasing the people and not chasing Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So in closing, I want to mention this dua. The first line of this dua, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min a'adzi wa kas wa kasli wa bukhli wa jabni wa wa harami wa adabu qabr." 
The first part of this dua, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "Oh Allah, in the hour of min an ajzi, Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from inability, right? Where a person can't successfully complete anything, right? First thing, as a young man, what do you do? You set off, you make your intentions on whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. What Allah Taala, you're asking Allah Taala, and sometimes this may be the key." Because sometimes you may fail at a thing, but it's that so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will alert you, you know, that you're alerted to turn back to Allah Ta'ala, to seek Allah Ta'ala's assistance, because the believer never does anything alone, not without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Learn to become reliant on Allah. Even if a person lost their car keys, right? There's a old there's a old uh story from Abu Hanifa. It was a man, he lost something that was very valuable to him. Abu Hanifa told him, and the man was a bit distraught, and he said, what bothers you? He said, um, I lost so-and-so. And he said, have you checked? He said, I checked everywhere. I can't find it, and it's really important to me. He said, go make wudu and make two rakats. And I promise you, they'll come to you when you're making those two rakats. Right? Now, most people are like, all the Billah, I stuck for the law. You don't go and make two rakats to remember anything. There was wisdom behind it because Abu Hanifa, when you read about his life and his history, he was very witty. He was very smart, right? And so the man came back after he slammed out. He went and he found, he found what he was looking for exactly where it was at. And he came back. He said, how would you know that? He said, because shaitan bothers you when you're praying. And you'll begin to remember everything. Right? If you forgot to turn the stove off, it hits you while you're praying two rock hats. If you forgot to do something, whatever it is, it comes to you during those two rock hats, right? So the inability. So then Allah Ta'ala, I mean, then the Prophet Sallallahu said, well, kasli, well, kasali, right? This is something that kills us all because and if you look at it with a lot of people, this is something that's killing everyone is laziness, right? We don't have no, no driven ethic. We don't have a driven, we don't have that motivation. Laziness. What stops you from praying to Hajjah? Laziness. What stops you from memorizing the Quran? Laziness. You make up a lot of excuses on why you can't accomplish it and do it, but laziness is really the true underlying disease that's stopping you from doing what you need to do. Third thing he mentioned is bukhul, stinginess. No, we don't have to be a big community, but you give what little bit you got and that little bit adds up and that little bit that adds up gets barakah in it and Allah multiplies it and others do it. But if no one sees you taking care of your own community, then no one else want to take care of their community, take care of your community either. Bukhul, stinginess. Every time you want to give sadaqah or you want to do something for someone, you always remember how you don't have it, but then you go and waste the money on something else that you didn't even, you know, something that you were more interested in. It's called sacrifice. You'll sacrifice that money for something that, that really sparks your interest. But when it comes to giving lillah, all of these things help you. When it comes to giving lillah, you got every excuse in the world on why you can't give. Then the Prophet Sallallahu went on and he said, Wajibni from becoming a coward. Right? I'm not saying you gotta walk out here like your name is Franklin, this is GTA, just <laughs> punching everybody. Being being someone of courage don't always entail you having violence, but just the fact, the mere fact of being able to stand on your methodology and what you want, sometimes that takes courage, right? It takes courage to wake your children up for fetching in the morning. It takes courage because I know a lot of parents that will let their children sleep because, oh, they're still kids. He's got to get up and go to school in the morning. It takes courage. Then Allah, I mean, then the Prophet Sallallahu said, وَحَرَّمِي <clears throat> And old age, decline due to old age. Now, this is something that's important because you ever heard of a thing called Alzheimer's, dementia, People just like sit, you know, just somewhere, just go schizophrenic, bipolar, and things of this nature, right? As you get older, these things start to set in, right? People become psychotic. They start, you know, especially gins start playing, especially a denier of the uh, of people who deny gins, right? A lot of Muslims deny gins. They deny the the uh, purpose of rukia and things of that nature, and the and the benefits that come with reading the Quran, you know, uh, consistently. 
A lot of people deny that. You're like, nah, nah, nah. You know what? Instead, I'll just pop a Xanax. All right? I'll go see the doc, you know, get me a script because I can't see. I'll go sit down and talk with the therapist. Sometimes that chronic was was. Imagine you sitting there and you're spewing your whole life to the therapist and the therapist, only thing they do is one word answer or just give you a, a open-ended question to ask yourself the same question. And then when you leave out, you're more confused than you was confused before you walked in there. All right? That he died from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the near future, we did it before, but we'll do it again. We'll do the tafsir on the last two surahs in the Quran. Right? All you got to do is just add the Juma, just go and read them. And read the words, the translation of the words. Right? Nas, jinn, nati, one nas, jinn, and, 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 uh, 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 mankind. Right? Was, was. Read those things. A lot of yourself, your self doubt. Imagine you suffer from chronic waswas, -was, and then you got a woman that's telling you, well, you don't do nothing for me. You'll start believing it after a while, right? You know what you do and your intentions, what your intentions is. Imagine that. Imagine people telling you, you're not a good father because you don't have time for me. Well, if you go back to last week's chutbah, we talked about Prophet Ibrahim al-Islam. You never heard that come out of the mouth of uh, Prophet Ismail, nor Ishaq, nor neither one of his two wives. But you hear that on a daily basis. Man go out working to take care of his family with a plan. You still complaining. Children still complaining. You don't do anything for me. And if you're not strong enough, if you're not strong with your Islam, you'll start to believe that. You'll start to doubt yourself. You'll start to say, man, I really ain't got it. See, the thing that's holding most people back today is the chronic waswas and the insecurities that you possess inside your heart about your own self. See, I'm not really righteous like the rest of the good Muslim. So now you use that as the excuse to stay in, stay in a state of sin or a state of weakness, right? This is what people do. However, and in the last part of this dua, he says, And from the punishment of the grave, right? Then the next line, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha wa zakiaha then Allah said, I mean the Prophet Sallallahu said, Oh Allah, make my soul obedient and purify it. So now here what you're doing is you're annihilating yourself and recognizing your inability to purify your own self. So you're asking Allah Ta'ala for you, for him to help you in purifying yourself. Make it make your soul obedient and purify it. For you are the one, the best one to purify it. And you are my maulaha. You're my guardian, right? I mean, my waliyaha. You're my guardian of it and protector and lord, you know, lord over it, right? So that's second thing, right? So what you're doing is now is that you are annihilating the uh, idea that you are all encompassing and in control of everything. And then in the third line, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean, the Prophet sallallahu says, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min nafsi uh, uh, la, tash, uh, la tashba'u wa min qalbi la yakhsha, yakhsha'u wa min ilmin la yanfa'u wa da'wa, da'watin la tastajaba. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this dua he says, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from a soul that is not satisfied. Because the one thing that kills you, other than other than somebody constantly whispering in you, is you always complaining and not content with anything. A person that's not content is never, ever, ever, ever happy. It's just misery. Their entire life is misery, right? When you when Europeans usually go somewhere in a desolate land in, in Africa or some in Asia, oh my God, look at them sitting here on the ground eating with their hands and they're happy. They barely got anything they don't have no house or anything of that nature and the people are smiling You're like yo i don't know if y'all recognize it but y'all you, you know y'all ain't even got like an infrastructure and they tell you it's all from allah right that doesn't mean that you desire better don't desire better but you're not gonna you're not gonna cry and complain because whatever you want you show gratitude as Allah promises you in the Quran, then Allah will increase you, right? 
So anyway, so that part of the dua, the second thing was, he says, woman in, uh, uh, hold on a second. لا لا تش uh, تشبع ومن ومن قلب right and also a heart that's not humble arrogance shouldn't reside in the chest of a believer right only time that arrogance is permissible is on the battlefield only time arrogance is permissible is on the battlefield right and it's not that kind of arrogance you know it's that like you like you playing ball you know, yeah, you just seen what happened, right? Like I walk in the mansion, brother, I talk about the Eagles and stuff. You know what I'm saying? That 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 that, that that's on the battlefield. I let you get that one, right? But I told you birds don't talk. But anyway, <laughs> the next line, uh, uh, the uh, the prophet says, "Somebody said, well, men and men, uh, la yun found, and he seeks refuge in Allah Taala from knowledge that it isn't of no benefit. And this is two things." Because knowledge and no benefit is knowledge that you can't act off of, right? You can read about the weight of an elephant, but there's nothing to act on, right? I'm not saying that it's not, you don't learn it. It might be beneficial somewhere down the line, but knowledge that you don't act on. And in the last part, in closing, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, la jabba, in a dua that's not answered. سبحانك على هو وبحمدك وشهر من لا إله إلا أنت واستغفرك وتوب إليك إكرام الصلاة. الله أكبر الله أكبر الشهر